And in some ways, because of what it does to the dopamine receptors in the brain, it actually makes us think we need to keep eating these foods. So in some ways, it starts to become this subconscious thing that becomes more and more difficult to fight. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome to the My Future Business Show. My name is Rick Nusky, and it's a privilege to be your host. And I say that because I have some amazing people on the show. I have a, a wonderful audience base, and I have to say thank you very much for tuning into the show. Now, today's guest is somebody very influential when it comes to looking after your mind, your body, and your spirit. And one of the things we're going to touch on, is, and it's uh, close to my heart, is kicking sugar habits amongst other things. So welcome to the show, Alex Coble Frakes. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, look, it's an absolute pleasure. Like I say, um, this is just a treat for me to be able to have people like you on the show. It's what I do. It's what I live for. It, it fulfills my life. So tell us a little bit about what's been happening in your life. Yeah, so I am a holistic health and wellness coach. Mm -hmm. I really look at with my clients of working from the top down, aligning every piece of their life so that they can have the most abundant, thriving life possible. Life possible. Mm -hmm. Because I found when one piece of your life is out of alignment, everything else is out of alignment, right? Yes. How we do one thing is how we do everything. So mm -hmm. it's really important to work with people on building the entire foundation for their health so that they can really have the best life possible. You know, it's obviously applicable to entrepreneurs as well, isn't it? Absolutely. I actually think it's so important as entrepreneurs that we are taking care of our health. If we are not taking care of our health, and let me backtrack, I guess sometimes as entrepreneurs, we think there's no way to make my health a priority. I don't have enough time, not enough hours in the day. How am I going to make my business run if I'm taking that time to go to the gym, eating correctly, having healthy meals, meditating, whatever, mm -hmm. I have to run my business. But what actually we find out that if you are not taking care of your health, it is going to slow you down in your business. And one of the one of the things I, I, I want to talk about, and we'll come back to it in a minute, is about sugar. But first of all, I'm, I'm looking at your bio, and can we talk a little bit about uh, your background, what you've done in your past, and, and what you like to do in your downtime? Yeah, so something that's interesting in my bio is um, I'm a Return Peace Corps volunteer. Mm -hmm. So. That's an organization that many people have heard of, you know, you get a chance to go abroad and live and spend time with with people from a different country. So I actually went to Peru for two years. So I got to go and take, um, you know, some of the skills that I had from my business degree and work with people on the local level. And I learned so much yeah. about my, my about myself, really. I think I learned more than what I was able to give to my community, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Um, but it was just a, a cultural exchange. So I, I lived fully immersed for two years in Peru, and that was amazing. I love to travel. I've spent some time in Europe. I spent about six months in Germany. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of go going all over the place. I really, really love traveling. It's one of my biggest hobbies. So do you have sugar at all in your diet? It, it's been a process. It's been a an evolution with my own health journey. I really started getting serious in 2015 mm -hmm. about the way that I was eating because I was extremely overweight. Yeah. I came back from the Peace Corps. I was the heaviest I'd ever been. I was struggling with seasonal de affective disorder. So really deep depression in the winter here. We get some pretty cold winters where mm -hmm. I'm from. Yeah. And anxiety, emotional eating, all of these different things. And I just got, I was really sick of my own sickness. So I knew I had to do something. So that's when I found a program and I got really strict about cutting out sugar and flour for a long time. So no, no bread products, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then over time, it's, I've kind of adapted the way that I eat, but it's really my preference to not eat any processed sugar at all. Um, sometimes I'll have honey syrup, like, um, you know, maple syrup or something natural versions. Yeah. And I do eat fruit. Yeah. But I really avoid table sugar whenever possible because it makes me feel so crappy. To be yeah, honest. it's a poison, isn't it? Really? It really is. Now, I just had this thought if we tie back to business owners, you know, in my in my former corporate life, I would often have, I don't know, five, six cups of coffee, let alone anything else. But with 
two tablespoons of sugar. Now, I, I dropped that out some years ago and the, the transformation was almost instantaneous because the next day I started to get withdrawals, but shortly after that I started to feel better, I started to lose weight. Has that been your experience? Yeah, so I, as soon as I started to cut out the sugar over a period of months, I lost 40 pounds and wow. I kept that off. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I, like my joints feel better. Yeah. I have, I actually have like a back injury mm -hmm. that was causing me consistent pain. But as soon as the weight came off and then the inflammation was reduced from not eating sugar anymore, that back pain has been gone. It really has affected every area of my life. And I didn't realize how much I was being affected by eating sugar. Yeah. Honestly. I I look at uh, business and I think to myself, how do I balance it if I'm so busy, let alone take care of my 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 wellness? I guess you call it. Is there a is there some sort of methodology that you use and and can help others with? Yeah, absolutely. I think we've got to get into this mindset where we cannot we cannot afford to continue to compromise our health in this way. Mm -hmm. You know, we, if we look at like, I have a, I'm a business owner. I want to do business. Well, like you literally can't do business if you can't get out of bed in the United no. or if you are so sick that you can't take client calls or you can't do your work, we cannot afford to continue to compromise in this way. And we look on a global scale. We are in crisis. Mm -hmm. We are sicker than ever yeah. on a global scale. Um, in the United States, obesity rates are out astronomical the preventable diseases that we're facing diabetes cancer heart problems all are costing us billions of dollars in the mm. united states alone and i think on the global scale it's around trillions it's trillions of dollars that it's costing us so when people keep saying i can't afford to do something about this because i have all these other priorities we truly can't afford not to do something about it is what it gets down to i absolutely agree and in australia our statistics are not that much better in fact we're we're nudging up near America in terms of our obesity rates. So it is a, a global issue that um, we have the opportunity and the power, should I say, to, to do something about it, don't we? Absolutely. And I think it's difficult when we're looking at a, like the, the addictive pull that different foods have. So like sugar can be really hard to stop eating, mm -hmm. right? So we look at it very differently than we look at drugs and alcohol because it's pretty clear to say you don't need alcohol to survive. You don't need cocaine to survive, yeah. right? But we need food to survive. Every person has to eat. So I think that's where a lot of the justification comes in for why we eat certain foods. Well, I have to eat. There's no choice. But we actually don't need Snicker bars to survive. We don't need <laughs> a, a pint of ice cream to survive. Yeah, as much true. as we may want those things, mm -hmm. it's not necessary for our survival. You know, if I look at business from a marketing perspective, I'm starting to get alarm bells ringing because you look at all all of these giants who shall go unnamed. Uh, they have a lot to be held accountable for, don't they? Absolutely. They're, it was actually, I think, in the 80s or 90s when they started food, it, we had this like huge global, everyone started to hate fat. Like everyone mm -hmm. thought that was the problem, the cause of heart problems, yep. all of these different things, right? We really demonized the, the eating of fats regardless of how healthy they were. And so if you take all the fat out of food, it tastes horrible, mm -hmm. right? So what people had to do, what the industry did at first, I don't think it was a bad intention that they just pumped sugar, the food full of sugar. So it would be palatable. But with time, they recognized that people were eating much more than they were in the past. And so they started to see the connection that sugar was addictive and, and hard for people to stop consuming. And they did it anyway. And I think that is the, the call that they're going to have to pay for it sometime. They, they, they've known for a long time the, how sugar affects humans and continue to pump it, pump everyone full of it. Yeah, I think it's pretty nasty. I look at the corporate world and I think and, and any other person that has a sedentary lifestyle, you know, it's so easy to get caught in this trap of uh, fast food and, you know, sugar flavored drinks and, and, and those sorts of things. Is this, is this a mindset thing for individuals? I think in some ways it, it is a mindset. Um, part of the problem when we're eating these types of foods, mm -hmm. when we're having these types of this big influx of sugar into our bodies, it's doing a lot with our blood sugar. Yeah. And it, it puts us on a roller coaster. And in some ways, because of what it does to the dopamine receptors in the brain, it actually makes us think we need to keep eating these foods. Yeah. So in some ways, it starts to become the subconscious 
thing that becomes more and more difficult to fight. So, I, but I believe that we can be healed from this, that we can be healed from this type of sugar addiction, that we don't have to continue on this spiral, on this path forever. And that really takes some focus to say, okay, I have these cravings, I have this reaction, this desire to eat this way, but with work and with effort, I'm going to start to put these things down. And you're so right when you talked about withdrawals. I had humongous sugar withdrawals. <laughs> yeah, six they're... months, I was exhausted. Oh, six months. They're not pretty, are they? No, it's not. So if you're helping somebody, uh, Alex, what are some of the ways to reduce those sugar cravings? So I think step number one is get really curious. Sometimes we find that, for example, I struggle a lot with emotional eating. Even after I stopped, I cut out the sugar, I would so sometimes like binge eat behind my own back. <laughs> <laughs> like in secret. <laughs> now look, Alex, don't do that. No, it's all right. I won't tell her. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> right. Because these foods can be kind of crazy. But what I found out is like there was a whole other emotional inner game that was calling for my attention that I had so for so long been been dealing with with food. And I think a lot of people struggle with that men and women and don't even realize that that's going on. Absolutely. Oftentimes when we are missing sweetness in our lives, emotional sweetness, we will go to sweet foods. It's very, very common. Mm -hmm. So a big thing is to actually start getting curious about why are you behaving in this compulsive way? What is your body actually looking for? Our bodies are constantly trying to bring us into balance. So if we have this craving for a sweet food, this is this is calling our to, attention to that we have a need that's going on, that our body is trying to meet with sugar because that's the best coping mechanism we've come up with so far. Mm -hmm. So we really need to start getting curious about what is our body actually asking us for? What do we actually need? And start meeting those needs in ways that are not food related. Are we talking about there is a, uh, a direct emotional connection between how we feel and the sugar cravings that we're having? It, it has been in my experience and it's been the experience of many people that I've worked with. So um, you talk about in actual fact seven ways that we can work on this. What are some of the other things that we should be doing? So a big one would be looking at your beverages, right? Mm. So you had talked about your own, the way that you had been, um, you had been putting it into your coffee, yep. right? Yeah. And those things really add up. We may not even realize the type of sugar that we're ingesting through different beverages. Um, you, you talked about having kids. A lot of parents give their kids juice from yep. concentrate mm -hmm. and think that that's a really great alternative. But that can be just as harmful to our blood sugar as drinking a can of soda, which I know is kind of shocking. What are some of the other things that we should be considering? Another thing would be satisfy your sweet tooth with sweet veggies, fruits, and spices. So I think it's, it's pretty normal to have a wide variety of tastes in our diet. It's really, really helpful. But looking at what are some other ways that we can have some of those sweet foods. So I love a bowl of fruit. I love, you know, like berries or mango, banana, I incorporate those into my diet. Um, sweet foods like sweet potatoes can be really delicious or even adding spices into our diet like sh cinnamon, coriander, nutmeg, clove, the whole spectrum. There are so many really healthful sweet foods that are great to our bodies. And you can, you can easily see how other um, associated foods that you would normally see a lot of people eating, like yogurts, can, can be a trap as well, because they're full of sugar sometimes, aren't they? Yes, yes, they really are. So you want it, more and more companies are starting to label with the added sugar, and that's really important mm. to look for how much have they added, because foods have a, a certain number of sweetness, right? Like if you, if you ate fruit, that has sugar in it, a different type of sugar than table sugar, obviously, but... We want to look at what are the added sugars that they're pumping in. And it's terrifying. Often, like per serving, it's like 12 to 24 grams in even something like a yogurt. That's amazing, isn't it? And you, yeah. and you wonder why we're up against this. Uh, we're, we're essentially in a war with ourselves and sugar. Yeah. I, uh, I'd love to talk um, about your business, Fully Aligned Coaching. Tell us a bit about that. So currently, I've been working with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And I think this is really important. Diets don't work. Mm -hmm. We've we've heard the statistics, right? I, I mean, most people have 98% of people gain the weight back after they do a diet. And it's because diets don't work. 
we cannot look at one size fits all because every body is going to need different nutrients, different combinations of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. So that's one of the things I do is really working with people one-on-one -on -one to figure out what is that formula for them. So it doesn't make sense to follow diets as dogma. No. We want to really work with individual people on what their needs are. Are you finding that from um, client to client that their needs are significantly different or they are generally profiled the same? I would say it really is a different formula for every person. Yeah. Everyone is coming, again, especially when we're talking about some of these emotional things, people are coming with a wide variety of different emotional needs mm -hmm. or struggles or problems that can impact their health and their diet. And so we really want to work with them on an individual basis to find out what is that secret sauce for each person. That's really great insight. So Alex, where can people find you to learn more about your business and work with you one-on-one? -on -one? Yeah, so there are a couple of great ways that we could get in touch. I'm on Facebook mm -hmm. at Fully Aligned Coaching. It's my business page. So there's a ton of information on there. I post live videos, recipes. There's always different activities going on so that you can kind of dip your toe in and then we could take the conversation further. And then I also have an Instagram account, Fully Aligned Coach. So you could follow me on there. And again, I post a lot of fun, interactive material throughout the week. I will, uh, as per normal, put the links below uh, this post. Um, no matter where it is, you'll find the links back to Alex. Alex, thanks again for coming on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you so much for having me. I hope this has been helpful. And again, if you just, if any listener has a question or is curious or has a concern, I would love to have that dialogue and really help you get on that path to your fully aligned life. It's been fun having you on the call with us today. Now click on that big red subscribe button and make sure you leave us a comment, share us with your friends, and join the growing list of leading entrepreneurs who have enjoyed their time on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews.